Hello everyone, this is Aaron Johnson with the Dwayne Johnson Group and Bridger Financial Services. Uh, we had an eventful second quarter with some ups and downs, uh, but mostly ups. Uh, after closing at record levels at the end of the first quarter, markets stumbled uh, as we entered April. Uh, it's basically been the same theme all year so far. Stubborn inflation, a decent economy, and strong jobs markets have all conspired to keep rates higher and the Fed Reserve on the sidelines. The Fed and the markets continue to uh, react to economic data for insight as we wait to see what comes next. Uh, we went from expecting six or seven rate cuts at the beginning of the year to two or three in the middle of the second quarter to only one sometime by the year, uh, year end. The economy slowed uh, in the first quarter. We finally got uh, the first reading of gross domestic product or GDP in April, showing an anemic growth of 1.6%. Then the second revert, revision in May was even weaker at a plus 1.3. Yet job and wage growth continue to be robust while inflation is stuck around 3.5%. That puts the Fed in a strange place. Does it continue to keep rates where they are uh, and try to push inflation toward the stated target of 2%? So far, rates at these levels have slowed economic growth. If we consider first quarter GDP, then the Fed is getting it right. But if we consider inflation, it's nowhere near the 2% level that the Fed would like to see. After initially driving inflation down from 9.1% in June of 2022, we've mostly been um, in the three to three and a half percent range on the CPI since last November we received some cooler inflation numbers from May, uh, but the progress to 2% seems to have stalled. Gas prices declined significantly in June, and I've been saying all along the energy uh, costs contribute significantly to the cost of goods and services. And despite the welcome relief uh, in the form of lower prices, uh, energy costs are not impacted by the Fed. Plus, they're highly volatile and can change on a minute's notice. Oil uh, ended the quarter at around $80 a barrel, and many economists and strategists are calling for uh, oil prices to go up in the coming months. That leaves the Fed unable to cut rates for fear of uh, reigniting inflation while waiting to cut rates to strengthen e economic growth. So the Fed did nothing again uh, in the second quarter, while the markets kept lowering expectations to the point where one rate cut uh, sometime in the next six months seems irrelevant. And we have to ask, are higher rates all that bad? Uh, well, in the second quarter, the market didn't seem to think so. Uh, the S&P 500, the Dow, and the NASDAQ all notched record highs. Each index added strong uh, to the strong first quarter results. The S&P 500 moved up 3%, 15% year to date. The NASDAQ was up almost 10% uh, in the quarter and nearly 18% for the year. The Dow has been flat and only up a couple of percent so far this year. But the Dow is not as representative of the broader market, so we've been told, as the S&P 500. And it's being hampered by laggers such as Boeing, Intel, and McDonald's so far this year. It really has been an interesting story as to who has performed really well so far this year. So maybe the Dow is not so old-fashioned as we may think. The biggest stock story of the past quarter is NVIDIA which overtook Apple and Microsoft as the largest company in the world on the back of excitement around AI and the chips that will lower, uh, that will power its adoption. Market breadth has been very narrow, meaning very few companies are responsible for all of the gains that we're seeing. But if they're in the index you're invested in, you can potentially be rewarded as well. I keep hearing that this is a stock picker's market and that there are going to be distinct winners and losers. So you have to avoid the passive or alternative or index or just find a manager of a strategy that will just pick winners and avoid losers. And there isn't a manager out there that can just pick winners. In fact, if you have invested in the broader based index like the S&P 500, you were likely rewarded because you were invested in that um, and it was diversified, and it held winners like NVIDIA, which helped the overall index, while other members were flat. But we all know that that can change, 
and being too concentrated in one or two big winners can cost you big time in the long run uh, once the rest of the market catches up. Earnings for the first quarter, which were reported in Q2, were, were much better than expected uh, and, show, and showed that so far companies are negotiating this higher uh, for longer rate environment successfully. At the end of recent earnings success is due to a resilient U.S. consumer that continues to spend, but the signs of fatigue are showing uh, as savings are depleted and credit card balances are on the rise. This is a sign of concern because if we lose the consumer, we most likely will dip into a recession. For now, that doesn't seem likely, but on the balance, there is more to be concerned about uh, than be optimistic with respect to the consumer. The yield curve has been inverted since last year, but the near-term yields have been a nice alternative as people get increasingly nervous about the market. Uh, the yield on the 10-year Treasury has hovered uh, around 4.2 to 4.7% the entire quarter. Although from a total return standpoint, bonds didn't really deliver uh, a whole lot last quarter. Still, the ability to invest in a CD paying 5% or a money market that's yielding over four is all almost a novel idea after nearly two decades of rates close to zero. Summing it all up, the past quarter has built on and continued the momentum of the first quarter. And the first half has been, pretty, has been a pretty good one for the markets. Every time we hit records is a good thing, but people do get nervous because they start to think that we're, on, we're in uncharted territory or we may have a correction or a sell-off. That is always possible, uh, but remember, markets don't go in a straight line up. Uh, instead, they have an upward bias over time and volatility is a natural part of normal functioning markets. This is why you have a plan and if you are uncomfortable, have an honest discussion with your advisor about the type of risk that you're taking and are willing to take and adjust if needed. Um, I will say that you cannot expect the same type of returns as the market if you're not in the market. So some risk must be accepted for potentially higher returns. Uh, if you have been letting things ride and are out of balance, get yourself back in balance with your goals right away. Uh, we may be in, uh, in for some turbulence in the second half of the year. So turn off the cruise control, take hold of the wheel. Uh, I'll be back with you in the fall. Uh, we'll see how things shaped up over the summer. Uh, last quarter, I said that staying the course and being disciplined uh, would be rewarded uh, again in the second quarter. I think that turned out to be pretty good advice. So I'm gonna double down on the same advice, stay diligent, review your goals, make sure you're not, that you're staying on track. Don't succumb to emotion uh, or the hype and make sure you're staying the course. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a phone call. Enjoy the rest of your summer and uh, we will be in touch shortly.